Hi friends, it's Deanna here today, and today we're working on um, episode 3 of our capsule sew along, and Bo is here with me trying to sew. Um, <laughs> so we are working on the rouge uh, uh, sunshine leggings today, so I'm going to do the rouge version with the um, elastic waistband, and we're also working on the cold shoulder tunic, which is super cute and actually super simple as well. So let's get started. All right, boy, you need to get down. Okay. We're gonna start with the legging version and just like we did the basic, we're gonna grab one front and one back and we're gonna place them together, right sides together, and we're going to make sure that's the right ones together, right sides together, so that the crotch is going the same way. And we're going to sew that outer seam together. Now you know that these are going to be a little bit longer because we have, we added the extra length for the rouging at the bottom and the extra length at the top for the um, elastic at the top because I'm going to do the elastic waistband. So make sure when you're cutting your pattern, you look at what your pattern markings say and you cut right at that pattern. So the other ones, I was going to make um, the elastic waistband and I cut them and then all of a sudden I realized I cut the lower line. So I went ahead and just did them um, with the yoga waistband, which I like as well, but I think I prefer the elastic waistband if you were to ask me, which one do you prefer? Um, I'd say, I like the elastic waistband better. I think that um, it stays better on the waist. Mm, I don't know why, that's just my personal preference. Though some people love the yoga one because it's softer at the waist, it's not as tight. So um, it really is up to you. So the way that you know the front and the back, look at the difference on the rise. This is, uh, the back is a higher rise than the front. Um, so let's go ahead and sew that. All right, so now it's time for a rouging effect. Got my pattern piece, I got my pattern. So you know this is gonna be our hem right here, so that's an inch. So we're going up an inch from the edge, and that's where we're gonna stop. I'm gonna go ahead and measure that. An inch right there, and then we're going to that purple dot. Well, I don't know if it's different colors for different sizes, I think. So then I'm gonna go ahead and put my elastic band right here where my first dot is, and pin it. And then I'm going to put the end of it where my inch is and pin it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and we're gonna stretch that elastic out and zigzag stitch it onto our uh, leggings. All right, here I am at my machine. I'm gonna put my needle down right on the elastic and I'm gonna stretch out my elastic all the way. I'm gonna put it right over that seam. And this is a very small elastic. It's not the size that you're supposed to use because I did not have that size. So I'm using a smaller elastic. It's not as stretchy as my quarter inch elastic, but that will have to do for today. I'm gonna turn this over a little bit so that way it, um, I can go all the way up to it. So I'm just fixing my pin over to the side. There we go. Make sure that your zigzag stitch is not too wide so that it is catching the elastic as you're sewing it. And there it is. Also, make sure that you're using a coordinating thread because you're going to be able to see it on the other side. So you don't want it to be something completely off. All right, now that that rouging is done, we can trim all this thread. I love that effect. I think it is super cute and adds so much to it. It's actually super simple. So now we're gonna go ahead and match up those uh, inseam and then we're gonna do that on both uh, legs and we're gonna sew that up right there. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and grab one of the pant legs and turn it right side out. 
and the other pain leg keep it inside out and I'm gonna stick one pain leg inside the other the right side out into the inside out because now we're gonna match them right sides together first at the crotch and then going all the way to the back and then all the way to the front those raw edges together and I failed to mention I try to always mention it but I was sometimes I forget um, this I'm working with is a um, waffle knit fabric I got this waffle knit fabric from Millie Mae uh, online and it is super soft and super cute and it's the same fabric I used for the everywhere uh, dress that I sewed up um, on our part two of the sew along yes so that's the same fabric so I feel like you know they're gonna be like mix and match pieces I'm in love okay so I'm gonna go ahead and sew that crotch all the way around I know what you're asking too this that I'm wearing today is the so scrappy and I know that you're asking that because this is an amazing pattern as well I love the color blocking and I used a um, double brush poly for most of it and then the dark colors is a cotton lycra is the black but everything else all the color blocking is double brush poly I know you always want to know and I always fail to mention it so I figured now that I remember I would let you know so let's go sew this up <laughs> Time for elastic. I already went ahead and overlapped my elastic and zigzag stitched it on. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna quarter that elastic. So I'm gonna go from the back to the front and then from the front and back to the sides and mark those. Now I'm gonna grab my bottoms, turn them, I'm gonna turn them right side out. These are looking super, super cute. These are gonna be adorbs. Cannot wait. My little niece is going to love them I think <laughs> so then I'm gonna go ahead and match up my elastic with my waistband you see how the back is higher I'm gonna put that back right here and pin <clears throat> and I'm uh, pinning it to the wrong side of my uh, bottoms because I'm gonna attach it to that wrong side and then I'm gonna fold it down and sew it top stitch it on so what I'm going to do is I actually like to do, um, let me center that. I actually like to do, sew it on with a zigzag stitch. The reason why is because you could do it with a serger, but I feel like it gets more bulk. So then when I fold it over and I go to top stitch it, it's really, really bulky and I don't like that. And my uh, cover stitch doesn't love it either. So I'm going to go over and just zigzag stitch that on along the edge. All right, now that it's been zigzagged on, we're gonna fold it right down and I'm gonna pin it down and top stitch. So you can either top stitch it with a zigzag stitch, you can top stitch it with a uh, cover stitch, however you wanna top stitch it. So I'm just gonna fold it down, make sure you got your seams right and then I'm gonna be obviously stretching a little bit as I sew that raw edge right there, top stitching at the edge of the elastic and the of the elastic and the and the pants so just top stitch right along the edge while I'm at it too I'm gonna go ahead and hem them and then we'll be done and we'll move on to our cold shoulder tunic all right time for our cold shoulder tunic and of course, I'm super excited about it because I love this pattern. So super cute. I, it's really hard. This fabric I'm using today is um, a ribbed, is it a ribbed knit? Yeah. And so it's kind of hard to tell which one's the front and which one's the back. But I think I got it. We're going to place our bodice back and front right sides together and we're going to meet up right here at the shoulder seams and the side seams. We're going to sew that in because we're going to attach our sleeve in a little bit different. Kind of like we attached our sleeve on our everywhere dress except for it's not a whole sleeve. It's a half, half sleeve because we're going to be doing the cold shoulder which I actually really, really love. I think it is super cute and... Um, it's kind of funny because, you know, sometimes you get kind of warm, but you want like more coverage. So it's like you get a little bit of a breeze on your shoulder, <laughs> breezy shoulder. Um, and, uh, like the breezy top 
our dress too. That's another one that's super cute. But anyway, um, so yes, so your shoulder gets cold, but then you have sleeves if you want to add the long sleeves and then you're good to go. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and sew, 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 but while I'm at it too, I'm going to go ahead and prep my neckband because we're going to do that after we do this. So I'm going to grab my neckband and fold it wrong sides together and steam it. I'm, I'm, y'all, I'm learning. If you've watched my videos, you know that I've dropped my poor iron so many times. So many times. My husband's always on me like, really? <laughs> Again? I'm like, I'm sorry. Uh, my poor iron, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And um, so I'm learning to actually put my iron down every time instead of just leaving it on my mat to, you know, go flying when I'm done with it. <clears throat> so once I folded that in half, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to fold it right sides together and I'm going to sew that raw edge right there. So now that's, that will be prepped for our next step. So let's sew that, those up. Alrighty, so I've got my sides attached and I've got my neck band prepped. I'm going to grab my top and we're going to now attach our neckband. So I'm going to turn it right side out and we're going to find our quarters. To find our quarters, we're going to go ahead and grab our shoulders and match them together and go to the back and quarter or do a little notch. I like to do like a little tiny notch that it's just small enough that I'll eat it in my seam allowance, but long enough that I'll see it if my pin falls off or anything. Then we grab our shoulders and go to the front. Then we match our front and our back notches and we go to the sides because our shoulders are not our quarters. If you go by your shoulders, your neck bend will be crooked. It will not look nice. So make sure you quarter. And then I'm going to do the same for my neck band. Fold it wrong sides together. Pin the back. And we're going to go to the front. And clip. Match the front and the back. And go to the sides. And clip and clip. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach our quarters of our neckband to the quarters of our bodice, matching them up together, right sides together. I like to start in the back so that that seam is in the back. And then we're gonna go ahead and sew that neckband on, stretching as we go. But I also wanna go ahead and prep my sleeve. So I'm making the long sleeve version. If you're making the short sleeve, um, you won't have, you know, the elastic, but I wanted that, so I'm going to do it and show it to you. We're going to grab the bottom of our sleeve, and we're going to place our elastic. Actually, I like to do pins sometimes when I'm doing elastic, but anyway. And we're going to pin it from here to here, and we're going to sew it on. So you can either do a zigzag stitch or serge it. I'm just going to serge that bottom on at the same time I'm serging my neckline. And I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I'm doing that to the wrong side of the fabric. So the wrong side of the fabric is where I'm attaching that uh, elastic. If I try to figure out which one the wrong side of the fabric is. All right, let's go sew it. All right, so what I like to do when I'm sewing a neckband is I like to put my knife, in, my, I'm sorry, my needle in. And then I'm going to pull and match up my raw edges on my neck band and my bodice. And I like to have my band face up so I can see it. I'm going to go to that first quarter point and pull it tight. When I get to that quarter point, remove that pin or clip and go over to the next quarter point doing the same thing. And then we're going to go all the way around. All right, with the elastic, you saw that came off. It also helps to get that elastic cut underneath the needle. So I'm trying to do that, but I guess I didn't really get it. So I turn my wheel all the way until it's there. Okay, so then that way when you stretch it, it is cut in the needle. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna grab my sleeve and fold it over and stretch it as I top stitch it and top stitch it together. And once that's top stitched together down, like hemmed, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it right sides together at that outer edge, raw edges together and sew. All right, we're gonna open up our tunic right side out. So this is the right side of my tunic and this is my arm, my arm side right there. We're gonna go ahead and open our sleeve and turn it right side out as well. And I'm gonna match that seam of the sleeve, the armpit seam, match it together with the bodice, right sides together. And I'm gonna go up one side and then up the other we're not stretching we're just matching the raw edge of my sleeve with the raw edge of my uh, bodice right sides together so that the sleeve is pinned halfway on you see that and I'm gonna do the same for the other one and then we're also going to go ahead and prep our uh, shoulder um, bands. Couldn't think of the word. So the way we're going to prep our shoulder bands is the same way that we prepped our neck band. We're going to fold it wrong sides together and steam it. Bring that iron over here and do it at the same time because <laughs> it's going to fall open. Make sure your iron is not too hot for your fabric. I make that mistake so often. I should already know this and I yeah I still make it like pretty much every project I'm like oh no oh no no then I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna sew those raw edges right sides together just like we did our neck band There we go. Now, if you wanna do your ruffle and you wanna go ahead and prep that as well, we can grab our ruffles and place them right sides together at the raw edge and sew those together as well. Man, this fabric is so hard to tell which one's the right side and which one's the wrong side. And if I can't tell this close up, like I'm looking and staring at it, then I just don't think it really even matters. Make sure your ruffles are not twisted when you're attaching them together. If they're twisted, then it will come out twisted and it will not work. So then we're gonna sew those raw edges together as well. Attaching our armbands. Same way that we attached our neckband, we're gonna measure from the shoulder back. There's my half. Then I'm gonna measure my from my shoulder to my um, one half and we're gonna go over and it's basically right there at the same, for me it's basically right at the where I put my sleeve. But then I'm gonna grab my band and we're gonna attach it just the same way that we attached our neck band. So it's like we're gonna treat this little area like a neck band area. And I'm gonna actually put that seam up top. Oh wait, I gotta quarter this band. Let me do that real quick. All right, now everything's quarter. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our band and I'm gonna start, like I said, the seam. I'm gonna put the seam at the top just because there's already a seam there, so it's just gonna be a continuous seam. There's no seam on the outer edge of my sleeve, so I don't wanna just put another seam there. So we're just matching up those quarter points, right sides together, and then we're gonna go ahead and sew it on just like we did our neckband. All right, so once we're done sewing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. Look at all this mess of little clips and threads. I'm gonna grab my uh, ruffle 
and I'm actually gonna go ahead and gather it now. So I'm gonna put a, a gathering stitch on my ruffle. Now if you wanna go ahead and hem your ruffle, you can do that, you can hem it at the end, you can leave it raw. I might just leave it raw, we'll see. I make up my mind once I finish it. You will hem it at either a half an inch uh, right here or leave it raw, it's up to you. I might, I don't know, I'm very, I'm usually, a lot of times I'll leave it raw, just, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just lazy. <laughs> and we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up uh, gathering it the width of our bodice. So if you um, want advice on how to gather, we have videos on our YouTube page on how uh, different ways of gathering, but I'm just gonna do a long basting stitch all the way around and gather it the width of my bodice. So we'll do those two things. All right, before I gather, I like to find my quarters, which I forgot to do that, so I'm gonna do that now. Match those uh, seams and go to the front and notch, and then go to the back and notch as well. That way when I go to attach it to my bodice, I know where my, like, half of my ruffle is, and it makes it a little bit better, easier to attach more evenly. Then I'm doing a long, straight stitch on my sewing machine about a quarter inch away from the edge and I kind of grab the tension up top and as I as I baste it and it kind of gathers it a little bit for me all right I'm gonna actually grab my bottom bodice my bodice the bottom of my bodice and quarter that so that way I know where those quarters are just like I did my ruffle so that way when I go to attach it I know where I want my quarters to be and I'm gonna place my bodice right here and I'm gonna grab my ruffle and what I want to do is I want to grab the uh, my bobbin thread and pull on it and that will help me gather my bodice where's my bobbin thread there it is pull it and gather and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna gather it all the width of my bodice. Alrighty, you all, I had some technical difficulties with my gathering stitch. It broke and so I went and added a little bit more gathering stitches and now we are good to go, good to go. All right, so now that my whole ruffle is gathered how I want it, make sure you even out those gathers um, how you want them. Use your, you know, your marks, your quarter inch marks, and then we're gonna put it right sides together with our bodice matching those quarter points that I made. And that usually helps me go back and make sure that my gathers are even when I'm gonna actually sew. So like I'm gonna find over here where my half is and then I know that from one point to the next that's how gathered it needs to be. So if it's not then I know that oops there's more gathers on one side than the other so I gotta move my gathers over a little bit um, to be even. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin, I mean clip, and then I'm gonna uh, even out my gathers and pin them all the way around nicely. All right, sorry about that, technical difficulties, but now that my gathers are even, gathered, gathered evenly, gathered evenly, gather evenly, and we're gonna go ahead and sew all the way around. Bo's over here trying to get into it again. You, you wanna go sew those ruffles? So let's go ahead and sew those ruffles. Alrighty, we are done with our top. Super, super cute. Now I just need to remove all these basting stitches. And if you want to, you can go ahead and hem. I didn't hem. Um, if I find that I want to hem later, then I mean, you can always hem it later. But I really, sometimes I just, I feel like it's not worth the extra hassle when it's a knit fabric and doesn't really need to be hemmed. It really is up to you. So sometimes it looks better hemmed, uh, sometimes it does, it's, I mean, I think it always looks better hemmed, but sometimes it's like, does it look that much better? <laughs> I guess I'm a lazy person. So anyway, here is my top, super, super cute, and I'm, try I'm still trying to battle with these um, basting stitches, and my rouged bottoms my uh, sunshine leggings look at how cute they are and look at how cute this outfit is 
together. Adorable. Can't wait to try it on on my knees. I think she's gonna love it. I know, I love it. I would want this in an adult size, actually. Yeah, actually, I would really love this in an adult size. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed um, this so along. Please let me know if you have any questions. Go check out the other uh, episodes <laughs> and um, make yourself your cute little capsule. Make your uh, loved one a cute little capsule. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes. Comment, like, share, subscribe so you can be entered to our $50 Alien My Gift Certificate giveaway we do monthly. Come join us on Facebook or Instagram so you can see what we're making and you can come join us on the sew alongs on our Facebook page. We have tons of sew alongs going on over there with prices and giveaways, so come join us. And again, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Bye!